So stabilize. And what do, what do I mean when I say stabilize? If you need to make $2,000 a month to cover all your bills, the first thing that you need to be doing is figuring out how to make $2,000 a month to cover all your bills, not trying to figure out how your business is eventually going to make you $2,000 a month, six months, a year from now. Now, if you got one of those businesses where you can go sell stuff and make $2,000 a month in your business, great. But if you've only ever sold $100 a month or $100 ever in your business, you might want to realize that it takes you a little bit of time to learn how to do all of that stuff. This business podcast, the two business guys mastermind uncovers for you secrets and share tips and tricks to entrepreneurship as they mastermind on how to have startup operational and overall business success so that you can go on to get better results. Enjoy. So, hey, everybody, today's episode, we're going to talk about, you know, what if you're behind scratch, <laughs> right? Uh, we don't, we kind of like the small business and, you know, maybe startups, but we've got a lot of people that life be life in, right? And I know I said <laughs> that wrong, right? So English teacher, I don't want to hear from you. Life be life in, right? And then Rob and I talk about if the math ain't math and life be life in, you're behind scratch. We want to talk about how to even get up to scratch. Because when I yeah. hear things, Rob, I'll start immediately saying, well, you could do this, you could do that. But I mean, what if the cars broke down and you make your money off of deliveries? Yeah. Yeah. What happens then? So let's bring them it can up be to difficult. scratch. Yeah. I think, I think for me, and remember, I've been in that situation before. So trust me, right? I had four part-time jobs while I was starting this business, right? Four I think one jobs? of the things- Four, right? Exactly. It was like, how many jobs you got, man? I got three jobs, man. No, I got four jobs, man. <laughs> For those of y'all that remember in Living Color, that's the sketch. Um, <laughs> but uh, the thing that I think a lot of people have to look at is that situation when you're behind scratch, right? When you're starting from behind scratch, that's a temporary situation. And what a lot of people do is they try to ignore the temporary situation instead of stabilize the temporary situation so stabilize. and what do, what do i mean when i say stabilize if you need to make two thousand dollars a month to cover all your bills the first thing that you need to be doing is figuring out how to make two thousand dollars a month to cover all your bills not trying to figure out how your business is eventually going to make you two thousand dollars a month six months a year from now now if you got one of those businesses where you can go sell stuff and make two thousand dollars a month in your business, great. But if you've only ever sold $100 a month or $100 ever in your business, you might want to realize that it takes you a little bit of time to learn how to do all of that stuff. And it's okay to be stable while you're learning how to do the rest of the stuff. Yeah. Because what it does is it takes a lot of psychic burden off of you so you can actually learn the things you're supposed to be learning. And what does that mean? That means doing data entry jobs at home. That means doing, uh, you know, working at Burger King or working at Domino's or working wherever you can find work in a way that allows you to make what you need to make. And then you start mastering the extra time that you have. Because at the end of the day, even if you work full time, let's be real, you work 40 hours a week, it's 168 hours in a week. You're not out of time. I don't care who you are, what you're doing, Unless you got three jobs and three kids and you a single parent, like you're not out of time. And so for those people that are struggling with it, it's how do you use your time better? And then start maximizing that time so that that time buys you back more time. Yeah. So yeah. I think that's my first thing. Stabilize. Figure out how to make enough money to pay your bills so that you're not behind. Because as soon as you know that you can pay your bills, there's a tremendous weight that lifts off your shoulders where your business now loses that scent of desperation that it has on it when you're going to sell people stuff because you need the money, not because they actually are going to get value from whatever you're selling. Yeah, I think, you know, and I took a 
a little different approach, right? So I knowing the particulars of this person's um, situation, right? And I, I looked at it, the case study. So the way, one of the very first things for me was, okay, here's, you know, cars in the shop, but I use my car to, um, you know, deliver food and all this kind of stuff. I said, okay. So first things first, right? I, it gives me, it gives me the idea that first we got to get a vehicle. Right. That means we've got the tools of the world. Right. We go and rent that vehicle. We we even <laughs> I was even so thinking in such a way that, OK, what car dealership will let me have the car overnight? Now, I'm going deep, y'all. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. Because, of, OK, I, I got to know, assuming that I don't have anybody I can borrow from, you know, my family's, you know, all gone or they're away. Nobody trusts me to use their car, whatever. Because I start digging real deep. I says, okay, first thing we try some tour roll. We try to rent the, uh, uh, a a car for a period of time. Okay, no harm, no foul, right? And then, all, of course, other things could come up. Well, you know, credit card, all these different things. But, yep. all right, second level of I got to make this happen. And I'm even accepting that I'm in desperation mode because I'm, I'm way behind scratch. I, mean, I don't even have, yeah. you know, sorry, scratch. So yeah. that was, that was one opportunity. Right. And I, yeah, says, I don't, I don't. And I, and to be clear, I don't mind desperation mode when you're getting a job, when you're working for somebody else, when you're doing other things, when you're trying to be a salesperson, desperation mode is not a good look. Mm -hmm. That's the key thing that I'm talking about. That's the only distinction I want to make there. But I agree with you. You need to recognize you're in desperation mode and get to stable, <laughs> right? Like, yeah, all things have to be on the table. You can't be above a certain type of job. You can't be, well, I can't work there. I can't do. No, you need to make money to take care of what you need to take care of so that then you have the luxury of picking and choosing how you're going to yeah. move forward. Sure, sure. And then on, <clears throat> on that end, when you can sit at home with your phone and do things that people don't like to do in that cell. Now we're talking, how fast can I get my money? Right. I mean, how right. fast can I get my money kind of a thing? Right. So when, again, my cars broke down, I can't get tour. I can't rent a car, you know, no dealership's going to let me have a car for two or three days so I can get a couple of dollars because <laughs> <laughs> I'm using all of the, those as opportunities. Yeah. Yep. Um, one of these other things that I used to think about, uh, if I had to like start from behind scratch was, you know, you can go rent a truck over there at like Home Depot and all this kind of thing. And I am uh, I would wait. Who needs help? What do you need help with? Do you need me to take that for you? We've seen this without getting in, you know, any insensitive or anything. We've seen people kind of waiting by Home Depot to get picked up to go to job. Yeah. Right? That yep. kind of thing, that level of a I got to make money. Now, yeah. I'm not it's, robbing nobody. Yeah. I'm not going to do nothing bad, but I'm going to make this money kind of a thing. Right. right? And, and I think the, the, the key thing to what you're saying is ultimately what it comes down to is how can you make yourself of value to someone else? Period. And while your business may be one way that you can make yourself of value, that's not the only way that you can make yourself of value. And Again, if, th if this is for people for who are beyond behind scratch, right? This is a if I'm broke and I'm behind on the month's rent and I'm behind on my light bill and I'm trying to figure this stuff out, which you first have to start doing. And I like Randy, you do this a lot and you talk about this. I, I love how you talk about, you know, letting the numbers do the talking and you can mm -hmm. figure out for your bills. How much money do I need to make every day so I can pay my bills? Because if you can break it down into those chunks, again, we're talking about $3,000 a month, right? Let's say just for easy numbers. $3,000 a month is how do I go make $100 a day? Right. Right? Yes. Now, $100 a day, it seems like a lot of money. But realistically, if you're working and you're making $10 an hour, it's 10 hours worth of work. I tell you, Rob, I used to be in helping people find jobs, right? I was working with a nonprofit and I used to say, this is what I want you to do. And every now and then, you know, we would, you know, give a couple bucks to go do this. I says, I want you to go over here to Goodwill and get some boots. This, this work, this works so good. 
but you have people with their darn egos. Now we're talking behind uh, scratch, y'all. So I'm I'm talking about digging, scratching, whatever outside of yeah. putting your hand yeah. out in people's windows, you know, as they walk, go past, right? Or they stop at lights. Not that. I'm talking about mm -hmm. another way. Um, and I said, go get some boots. I says, I want you to come into the office here, and I want you to call every, um, um, what what are those group uh, those uh, manpower type staffing things? Agencies. Uh, staffing agencies. Uh, here's mm -hmm. a list. Boom. Every last one of them. And I says, when they get you, I says, because their job is to find you work, period. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And um, and then keep in mind, you know, some people are coming from, you know, incarceration situations. They were doing all, I had all kinds of things going on. Right. I says, but it's that level of getting after it. That's going to mm -hmm. work. I said, so when you right. go to the interview, you bring your boots with you. I says, now this is obviously factory situations or whatever it is. Because exactly. they pay well. Those are, sometimes those are great jobs, right? Right. And it's one of those things, again, it's not great work. It's not some of these jobs. You're not going to be working there six months a year. Right. But you're going to be working there three months, four months, five months. So you can get back to scratch which will give you the opportunity to then decide what you want to do next. I remember when I was in, when I had graduated college, was getting ready to go to grad school and I didn't know what I was doing, what, what I was going to do, what type of grad school I was going to go to, was broke, was, had moved out of my parents. So I graduated college, was living in my apartment, then came down to live with my parents for a little while. It was like, nope, don't want to do that no more. So now I'm living with my girlfriend, but now I've got a, figure out how to pay rent and all the rest of that. Cause I can't just be bumming on her couch. And so I got jobs and I went and just found jobs. I went to staffing agency. Hey, find me a job. I don't care what type of job, just find me a job. Boom. I had this job. I had this job. I had this job. And I was working three jobs because I had time. I didn't have no kids. I didn't have nothing else to do. I, I was working three jobs, but working three jobs allowed me to stack cash. So then I only had to work one job. Yep. Yep. Been there, been there, bro. I've been there. I was selling suits at the mall, working at a uh, factory, and then working at um, um, a convenience store. Three jobs, right? Y'all, y'all, I'll show the receipts. Three jobs, <laughs> and then the guy at the factory said, "Dude, what are you doing?" He says, "Just work overtime." He said, "Do the math." He said, "You're going over here. You got to change. I'm gonna have to change in the car, man, because I'm getting ready to go yep. in the factory." Right, yeah. like, dude, what are you doing? Don't wear a suit here because you can ready to go lift some corrugated. Exactly. Right? <laughs> and um, <laughs> like, this is how I came. But anyway, and then I did the math, and he says, "So okay, back then we weren't, weren't making a lot of money, but the overtime time and a half it was time and a half." And he said, "At that time, we could work a lot of overtime, but I wasn't thinking like that." I was thinking I need to do all these different things, and it was a consolidation of that. Okay. Now, now, what we're describing, everybody, is if you're if life is life, in, it it oftentimes depends on what you're willing to do outside of again, you know, putting your hand out to a stranger and saying, you know, I can't eat or whatever. All yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. Will you entre hustle like that? Entre mm. hustle. Like right. Are you. Are you so I like that. I like hustle. that. Entre hustle. <laughs> this is something that that. Um, that uh, John Hendershot and I had come up with the entre hustler, right? Yeah. It's part entrepreneur, part hustler, but you have to be able to combine those things. And oftentimes one is going to take over. It may be in hustle mode. I mean, straight hustle mode. And then to, where you can get to the level of becoming an entrepreneur and once you get to the level of becoming an entrepreneur, you know, you got some systems and blah, 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 blah. So we just combine that entre hustler, right? And we never did it. much with it, but we, you know, I, I got entrehustler.com so I can still spin it. Yeah. Now, right. And I still may. But I my point is, is that do you have, will you do it? I, I can tell you personally, I can remember a time when my ego made me say, I don't want people that know me to see me struggling. Mm -hmm. It was a time mm -hmm. when I had worked a job and they had laid off and here I was, you know, blah. So I I literally left town, moved away to go find another yeah. job because I didn't want people around here to see me yeah. going to interviews and stuff. That's wrong headed. 
<laughs> but the good part about it, and this is this is the thing that is important to think about in here. What you did was you made sure you got a job. You didn't allow people not you, your ego to make you not do what you need to do. So you still hustled. You just were hustling, you know, sure. yeah. backwards. And I, and I, but you, I, <laughs> there's some things that you know, I called some people that I knew. Hey, are they looking for work? Yeah, down south. Like down uh -huh. south. Well, I thought, oh, okay. Now it's an adventure. I'd never been out of, um, <laughs> you know, lived out of of the city kind of thing, you know, not live. Mm -hmm. So it was mm -hmm. an opportunity, but that's a whole different conversation, right? I think yeah. that's one of those, Rob, you talk about it in your book. I want you to reference some of the things when we're talking about thriving in chaos, right? And you yeah. talk about, here's chaos. Well, how yeah. do you bend that to your will? Please exactly. grab a couple of, yeah. of, of sentiments yeah. and share with our audience. I think, and, and I think the biggest thing that people have to realize is, and this is one of the things that was like the aha moment for me. And this is actually a Jim Romeism that I, that I like, I heard Jim Rome saying, and it made sense. It was like, so many people are asking, and you know, they, they pray and they asking God, God, make my problems go away. Make the challenges go away. Make life easier. And Jim Rome was like, stop asking God to make your life easier. Mm -hmm. And start asking God to make you better. Mm. Because the beauty of it is, if your life stays exactly where it is, but you're better, it doesn't bother you as much. But now you're also capable of so much more. Ooh, make you better. Right? Yeah. And that's really where thriving in chaos comes from, right? Most of us are just trying to survive, just trying to make it day to day. Can I get to the next day? And the whole thing about it is, is remembering that we are not like you're not on this planet to just survive. Like that's the bare minimum. Like that's the floor of existence. Like, am I breathing today? Yes, I survived. Yay. Right. Like that's not the, that's not the goal. The goal is to have life and have life more abundantly, right. Mm -hmm. To be able to live and, and thrive in everything that you're doing. So then the question is, how do you get yourself to the point where you can thrive with the chaos still being the chaos. Mm -hmm. It's not going to change, right? Life is going to keep life in, right? <laughs> and at the end of the day, how do you do that? So what we do is, you know, we talk about five steps. The one that's, that, that I think is most important for what we're talking about today is that people have to define success. You got to figure out what thriving is for you. What thriving is for you may not be what thriving is for your mom, for your dad, for your cousin, for your sister, for your auntie, for your friend. Mm -hmm. And so many times we waste a lot of our time chasing other people's dreams. Mm -hmm. And then it's not fulfilling. And we think, oh, well, you know, doing all that work isn't worth it. And it's like, no, nah, it's not worth it for their dream. But what's your dream? What's your purpose? What's your reality? What's the What's the thing that puts passion in your heart? And so that first step is defining success. And you got to figure out what moves you, what drives you, what gets you up in the morning, what, what would make it worth it. Friedrich Nietzsche said it this way. And y'all forgive me a little bit. I got a, a little bit under the weather. Without Nietzsche. <clears throat> Friedrich Nietzsche said it like this. He said, a person can endure almost any how if they have a big enough why. And for a lot of you all, you're running away from the how. You're running away from the heart. You're running away from what is actually the pathway to your dream. But it's because you haven't really locked into why you want to do what you want to do. What changes, What how it, how it will improve, how it will better you, how it will change your entire legacy, how it will change generational poverty, how it will change generational curses. That have, that have been, you know, dealing with your family, generational disorders and, and diseases and, and things like that, that that have that have hurt people that you love. You can be that person that steps up and that changes the narrative so that from you forward, your last name or your family history is this is who we are. Mm. We're the kind right? of people that do this. Exactly. We're the type of people that do this, right? That's one of my favorite. That. That's an identity scene, moment. Right. One of my favorite scenes from any movie is in The Lion King, which is one of my favorite movies. And yes, it's a Disney animated movie, but still one of my favorite movies. And it's the scene when um, Rafiki is messing with Simba mm -hmm. and he hits him. He's like, 
oh, you want to talk about me? You don't even know who you are, right? And so he starts oh. running, starts laughing, and Mufasa then comes and, and, and starts talking to Simba. He's like, son, remember who you are. You're the son of the king, right? Like, yeah. like, remember who you are. And there's this moment where it's like it clicks in Simba's mind. He's like, oh, yeah, I forgot who I was. And so many of us have forgotten that we have greatness within us. You are here for a purpose. You are destined for greatness. You don't wake up. You don't breathe. You don't open your eyes without a purpose to be great within you. And so once you figure out what that is, it changes how everything else hits. Right. You know, the, the, there's that saying where it just hits different. Right. Life hits different when you know who you are, when you know what your purpose is, when you know why you're doing what you're doing. So I, I really um, entreat a lot of you all to, to, to find out what that is. Now, there's a couple of different things that we can do. We've got an assessment and, you know, they, they, they can help you figure out what your why is. We've got um, in the book that Randy mentioned, there's uh, there's a couple of activities and exercises that will help you figure out what the what success looks like for you and how you can articulate it and how you can get it away out of just pictures and put it into words but at the end of the day that's the that's the biggest thing i think people need to really look at what is their why that's big enough to not be concerned about the how yeah and you know and that look we get it you know that sounds like okay that's easy but i'm in the midst of of the lion's den. I'm in the midst of, you know, there's, there's something coming to eat me kind of, and that's life. Get yeah. it. Don't, don't want to minimize it. Right. I mean, I was doing mm -hmm. some stuff on the AI. AI said to me, look, that's, I didn't say that's simplification. <laughs> and I was like, well, shut up AI. And it was like, <laughs> and I used one AI to kind of check on another AI's answer. And it says, well, that's okay, but it is a simplification of a larger, more complex thing. So you shouldn't just take that as face value, blah, blah, blah. I mm -hmm. was I was appreciative of that insight. And it was mm -hmm. critiquing another uh, uh, AI saying, all you have to do is this. So <laughs> we hear you. We understand that. Mm -hmm. And I love to dig down into the, and what are you willing to do outside of any illegal stuff? What are you willing to you know, how to what depths are you willing to, to dig? Yeah. Yeah. Right. And then if you can be directed, are, are you willing to accept that direction? It's like, yes. okay, here's something here's that you can, do, you can do that will earn you a couple of bucks that you can then parlay into this. Right. I mean, forget all the stuff you hear, the gurus on. I'm talking about getting out there doing a little entre hustling. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> go ahead and let's say it. Get a little entre hustling. Right. Emphasis on hustle so that I can then weave it into an entrepreneurial journey, et cetera, et cetera, mm -hmm. then parlay, right? And I know that's yeah. hard. I know I, there was, Brian, I can, I can tell you there was times when I was saving money and I would only, and, and I don't mind sharing this, that I was spending maybe a, at work $1.35. Right. And I ate a lot. I remember eating a lot of sunflower seeds during that time <laughs> because I can get a big old bag and they were and they, yep. they they curved my hunger. Yeah. And I just wanted enough money to buy a, a pop at at, at, the, at work. It was thirty five cents in our machine. Right. At the time. Right. Mm -hmm. And and then because um, <laughs> they were doing it for the for the employees. Right. So it was it was cheap anyway. Mm -hmm. And um, and then I wanted a, a dollar, you know, a dollar would do it. Right. I was able to get something. I was eating a big old bag of, you know, and the nuts that were um, in that mm -hmm. curbed my hunger because of the, the fat and the, the seeds, whatever. And I that was it. That was it for for a period of time. Yeah. And yeah. I got paid and then I had a couple of dollars, but I had a lot exactly. more because I wasn't buying all this stuff to eat. Exactly. Dave Ramsey says it all the time. He says we do what we have to do. Until we can do what we want to do and we live how others won't so that we can, that one day we can live yeah. like yeah, others can't. can't. So true. Now, OK, let me get off our soapbox here. When we're <laughs> talking about this particular case study that we wanted to share mm -hmm. without going into much detail was mm -hmm. if you are coming from behind scratch. Yeah. Yeah. Some and people so, are like that. Right. And so I think like, this. 
yeah, I was going to say, I think to summarize, because we had a couple of different points. First point <clears throat> was you got to stabilize, right? Stabilize, you got to yeah. figure out what stable looks like so you can get that psychic weight off your head. And then the second point Randy brought up was you got to get your entree hustle on. You got to figure out how you can bring value, how you can make money. And, and, and you really have to look at lots of options. You can't just look at one thing here, one thing there. You got to really be uh, creative, but you also got to have that hustle. You got to have that drive. And then I think the last point that we kind of talked about just a second ago is you got to define success for yourself so that you can start moving towards thriving, towards being past scratch instead of just having scratch as your goal, right? You got to remember who you are. You're destined for greatness. You're destined for more than just surviving. And, and so now, those three things, that can get you past that, that scratch point. With everything that's available to us, y'all, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Everything. We got answer engines. We've got search engines. We've got um, uh, you know, stuff that we can do online or stuff that we can do offline. Everybody's running toward online. Everybody's running toward AI. That's all the stuff that is being forgotten, right? So we're going to need people to fix it and, and change tires, right? We're going to need people to, to, to fix plumbing. AI yep. ain't going to do it. Can't do it. Exactly. So let's get out there and get a little entre hustler in you. If if life is getting you like that, if you're coming from behind scratch, right? I'm going to share a couple links with you. This is the thriving in chaos stuff, right? And then I may have some stuff if I've spun it up yet, the entre hustler stuff so that you can kind of go, okay, here's a list of things to do. I'm, uh, I'm really getting big on checklists. Really? Yeah. Wow, I'm yeah. telling you, because yeah. sometimes even it's now good. I could use a checklist. I'm like, oh, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. It helps you to be able to make sure that you've done everything. It's due diligence. Dude, I just bought a checklist just the other day. And I was like, dude, what are you doing? Seven dollars. <laughs> I just wanted to see it. And it was, you know, it yep. was okay. But I, yep. it was a checklist. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. oh, this one right here. Checklists are powerful. Number eight, I wasn't doing. So let me go ahead and incorporate, incorporate number eight. Worth the seven dollars. Yep. So we're gonna, you know, you know, leave some of that stuff for you. And I, I'll make a note here to leave um, the checklist, and then give you access to where you can go buy. You know, yeah, a couple of yeah. bucks, right, over there at Amazon or something like that. Yeah. Download it to your phone and start using it. There we go. Right, and then of course you can, you know, put a little something in the in the notes for us, comments or whatever you want to do. Go ahead and comment. That will work too. Yeah. Tell us that we're full of canal water. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> hey, y'all don't understand. I was, get this. I was literally looking at a, um, a article that said, and it was a trends article, right? I do a lot of stuff mm -hmm. while I work in trends and stuff like that. And they says over in Africa where there was like nothing happening in certain areas that it's like one of the biggest I didn't go into too much of the article because I want to save it. It's one of the biggest groundswell of entrepreneurial hunger. Yep. Yep. Not regular hunger, entrepreneurial hunger. Yes. Right? And I'm just saying that then things are available for us. <laughs> exactly. And, and people now, I think that's are going to need I think that's resources. The, that's the note right there. There are opportunities out there if you're willing to go seize them. Let's go. That's it. That's it, everybody. All right. Hey, that's it. All right. That's all we want to share with you today. We hope you are well, and we hope that you contact us and get after this stuff. All right. We'll talk next Let's time. Let's go. Talk to you soon. All right, brother. I got it.